What was the whole Portia Williams thing about? Now I have to, I apologize to you, Portia Williams. <laughs> For the first time in history, I was told to keep my mouth shut, but I'm now being asked about that. I apologize to you, my sister. Wrong. However, um, I wasn't dating um, Tio at the time that this happened. This uh, was the, the son of, I guess, an African dictator? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Told you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, yes, I was dating this son of an African dictator. That sounds so crazy. Um, but for me, let me just clear it up. When I first met him, years before the Portia thing, he was Prince Hakeem coming to America, <laughs> coming to find his bride. That's what I, I ultimately thought that. That, that was the story? That, that, that was, was the story. That was being like, sold? This African prince wants to take you out when he comes to have his, his holiday in California. Would you be willing to go out with him? I was like, <laughs> fuck yeah. So <laughs> I go out with him. It's the most amazing thing ever. And by the time Portia happened, that was 10 years off and on with this guy. Mm -hmm. And he drove me crazy. I'll, I'll say that. But the last one I had addressed her, that was something that he asked me to do. Um, because his parents got on him. He's the most talked about one out of that country because of his spending habits. And, uh, you know, his luxurious lifestyle, and he doesn't really work for the money. He's like a spoiled, rich brat. So, well, and the country is Equatorial... Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea, which so, I haven't even actually heard of, to be honest. It's actually really beautiful. Is it? it you is you went out there? I went out there. I just come back when the Porsche thing happened. Okay. So, and at this point, we were just friends, but his parents wanted he, him and myself to get married. This was their thing that they really wanted. So you when didn't want Portia, to do that? Not at that point. I was over it. You were over it? Yeah. Okay. So when Portia... You, you didn't want to be... Well, you could have been, I guess, a princess of this country. Well, I mean, I guess his dad wasn't the king exactly, but, but kind of, sort of, right? <sighs> no, I couldn't have never lived that. Nah? No. Maybe if it was to his brother who's a little bit more gentleman-like, tamed. Okay. Yeah, but for him, no. Um, but he asked me to address Portia. I went to my, um, my publicist at the time and I was like, can, can you do this? Because his parents are mad and they're upset and they're saying, you know, um, who is this girl? She's, she's putting the country at danger, saying all this stuff. She's putting the country at danger. Well, they had already <laughs> just gotten their hand slapped for his, his spending. He bought the Batman car from the movie. He bought the the uh, the motor things from Tron, the movie. Like he had just been. He has the Michael Jackson glove that the U.S. has been trying to get back from him. All of wait, this wait, stuff. Wait, 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 wait. You're telling me that this guy owns the Michael Jackson glittery the glove. The original the one. The original that went on auction. He bought f a few things. An how, outfit. How much was that? Was that glove? I don't know. Let's look this up. This is obviously a very prized possession. Hold on. Yes. Michael Jackson. Glow. But, you know, there was all this stuff going on when Portia said that he bought her... Five million dollars. Okay. In 2012, this glove sold for five million dollars. Mm -hmm. So he's just buying five million dollar gloves. He just... Just to do it. <laughs> he has pocket money, too. I won't even tell you how much that is, but his pocket money is, is some people's salary for a whole year. So you're, you're going out with someone who's just really rich and really reckless with the spending. He's very reckless. So during the time that Portia had stated or that it came out that this African had bought her this, this Rolls Royce Phantom and, and this and that. Did, that's, you get, did you get any of that stuff <laughs> yourself? No. no. No? Really? No. I mean, The I, guy that's buying five million, five million dollar gloves who wants to marry you. I didn't get he's it. He's buying you something. Come on. He did. He <laughs> bought me lots of things. That's what I'm saying. But but I'll tell you about the car situation. I turned a car down. You turned a car down? I did. A Rolls Royce? No. He wanted to buy me a what is the car? Maserati. Okay. He wanted to buy me a Maserati, and this was like years ago. That's like hundred and fifty thousand or so. I told him I didn't want it. I didn't want no car. You need to get me a, a car with a driver, because I don't like to mm. drive. And so we had an argument about that. And of course, I didn't get shit because I didn't take what he was offering. I was like, I don't okay. want that. Um, 
so that's why I didn't get a car. And I got another offer for a car, but I, I don't, Alfa Romero, I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. You didn't give me what I asked for, a car with a driver. Yeah. So no car, no driver, no car. Fuck you. And that's how it was for me and him. But, um, but I feel bad about Porsche. I mean, was he buying you extravagant gifts along the way outside of this car? Uh, yes, he definitely did all of those wonderful things. Um, took me on some extravagant trips, you know. Uh, I got nice things from this man, but the part that burned me up about him, and I know he's gonna see this interview and hate that I said this. Um, I didn't like the way that he treated others. Um, I remember we went to um, Maui one time. It was an uh, apology gift. We stayed at this beautiful resort four, and- Four Seasons? No, it was Wailei. Okay, I say the Four Seasons in Maui. Wai Wailei Hotel. It's really one of the better hotels there in Maui. Yeah. And w along with the Four Seasons. Yeah. Um, really beautiful i thought he was really being apologetic for some craziness that he had pulled on me but he wasn't that's just where he wanted to go um his security he got us in our rooms but he didn't make sure that they were okay they were standing outside the door all night long and all day long for two days i was giving them slipping them money you know I didn't know that $50 didn't do shit for you in Maui, but <laughs> right. I was doing what I could, you know? And um, we were down by the pool and the, one of the guys, he had passed out. I didn't see him pass out, but he did. And he laughed about it. And- but Why didn't he, I mean, he had multiple security guards everywhere he went? Well, he brought them with him everywhere he went. He travels with them. With, he's, with security. he's a diplomat, so he has to. So I guess what, there's kidnapping, with all that of that type of thing. Oh, uh, I don't know what that was. I was new to the world. All I do know is that particular trip, one of his his security had passed out, and he laughed and said it was funny. So when we get by the pool, we have a cabana. There was complimentary fruit, and I gave it to the guy, and he yelled at me and told me that I was being stupid, that I don't give his stuff away. I'm like, it's free. He was like, it's mine, and we were moving to a different <laughs> cabana. So we come from two different worlds. You come from a world where you are a ruler and what you say goes, and that's fine. I come from a world where you gotta take care of your people. If you want them to look out for you and make mm -hmm. sure that, you know, that they have your back the way that they should, you need to take care of them and make sure they're just as good as you are. I think it's hard for someone to relate, you know, someone who's never had to work ever mm -hmm. in life to relate to someone who, who has had to work. You I know, think I, that was this. Like, I'll give an example, like, I had an interview set up with Tom Hanks' son, and out of all the interviews I've ever done, he just called in and said, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> no, no reason, no, it was like, yeah, I, I'm not gonna do it. And you know, we have camera people set up and everything else like that, and it's like, okay, well you grew up with a wealthy family, you've never had to work, you don't understand that I have costs and I have right. bills and I have my own family and I have to pay people who showed up today yeah. and I have to pay for the studio and everything else like that. You have someone that grew up in extreme opulence who's ne probably never had a job, right? I don't think so. Because before the oil, there was gold and diamonds uh -huh. coming out of their country. And then they got the gold, and I mean the uh, the oil, and and that just you know sent that family. And they're a great family. Like his dad, I don't know why his dad has the reputation that he has, because I never saw any of that shrewdness or meanness at any time. Like whether I was in his presence personally or outside with the country watching him speak. Well, I mean, you see these smaller African countries have military coups <laughs> and stuff all the time. Uh, like. You know, I, ca I can't really say because you know, maybe he, I only saw what they wanted me to see. Right. I don't know. Um, but I don't have anything bad to say about that country or, or the people of that country because it's actually really beautiful. Mm -hmm. What I disagree with is how spoiled and how he had me involved in his mess, and I'm, I'm a ride or die. If you are my friend, if you are my man, I'm going to ride for you, regardless. Mm -hmm. So what he did 
and he used me to throw Portia, to throw me off of whatever he was getting ready to do to, to give me the energy of get, get Portia. And I was foolish enough to, to go ahead and Bonnie and Clyde it when that's not what he deserved. Mm. So again, I apologize, Portia. Well, Portia's having a baby too. <laughs> she, yeah, she's fine <laughs> she, now, she's but moved she needs to know that, <laughs> right. that that really didn't come from me personally because mm -hmm. I, I actually like the girl, you know.